Hi dear students, welcome to one more session of microbiology and uh, in the coming sessions we are going to talk about microscopy and its relevance in uh, microbiology. As we all know, microorganisms, most of them are being found to be of the size of uh, micrometers. Now what is micrometer? Micrometer is 10 to the power of minus 6 meters, that is 1 by 10 to the power of 10 raised to 6. So you can imagine the size of a microorganism. Uh, normally, it is not visible through your eyes. And the size of microorganisms will be found to be varying. Now, if you go to consider the common bacterium, it has a size of about 0.2 micrometers. That is 0.2 into 10 raised to minus 6. That is the probable size of a bacteria. So if you have to view them, uh, it is not possible using your naked eyes. And if you want to find out uh, the phenotypic characters, whether it is rod, whether it is circular in shape, or whether it is uh, a spore forming, or whether it is uh, capsule forming, or like that different properties of these bacterial cells can be viewed only if we can adopt the principles of microscopy or the use of microscopes because they are not visible to our naked eye quite often. And uh, so, if you go to consider microbiology, it goes in hand with the technique of microscopy. And uh, we have different types of microscopes which will help us to magnify and view these bacteria as well as uh, various other microorganisms to a different extent. Quite often we use light microscopy uh, because light is the most common uh, uh, element which we uh, medium with which we work. In addition to this, sometimes we also have electron microscopy, which will help us little more magnified to get little more magnified images and all that. So in this session, I would be just, I'm not going into the uh, types of microscopes, but I would be talking about the basic principles of uh, light microscopy uh, right now. So what is a lens? What are the properties of a lens and uh, how does it affect uh, the quality of a microscope uh, or the effectiveness or the magnification of the images caused by a microscope. That's what we are going to talk about. It's just an introductory session on uh, the microscopy. If you have a lens, uh, a glass lens, it has mainly three properties. Every lens have a property that it is clear and uh, it is it will be curved most probably and it always bends light. and it is of course transparent because unless and until a lens is transparent, uh, if it, light will not pass through it. So the bending of the light is a key property that allows the microscopes to magnify images. Uh, when you bend the light, okay, uh, what happens? It will, when it bends, uh, there are different benefits from it. Now, if you go to look at this particular position, you can see the light which has been coming through different parts of this particular lens are being focused and they are coming to at one particular point. So what happens? Uh, all the information which is being conveyed by each and different ray of the particular light is being focused and it has been, you get a very good uh, concentrated image when you are focusing the light. Of course, you can see if you uh, you can just imagine a situation now. If you are standing in a in a big crowd, and if a light is focusing onto you, you would be viewed betterly. The same way, uh, if you if the whole light which is occurring around is focused onto a particular organism or particular specimen, you will be able to view it in a better in a better way. So the bending of light is needed to focus a light onto a particular organism or a particular specimen. Okay, so three different properties are there. Uh, lens bent light and of course lens is transparent, only then it can pass through it and also it is curved and uh, since it bends light, it what happens? It will 
either diverge or converge. Now here this is a case of converging depending on the type of the lens. Not all lenses uh, converge. Some of them diverge the light but depending upon what lens you are using this is a convex lens now. Okay, and This convex lens is converging light and another thing that you have to notice the light also when it moves from one medium through the next medium it has a it also gets what bent to some extent. Now these are the different types of uh, lenses which we have the convex lenses which will diverge the lens light the convex lenses which will converge the light and you know flat glass it just passes the light through it it does not have the property of converging or diverging and the prism it splits a ray of light uh, these are some properties of uh, uh, lenses so if you have a lens it normally focuses the light rays at a specific place called the focal point and the distance between the center of the lens and the focal point is called the focal length. And always uh, the strength of a lens is related to the focal length. The shorter the focal length, uh, you mainly consider that a better magnification is being obtained. Now, you just look at this. This is a convergent lens and what happens? When light is passing through it, the light is getting converged at a particular point. And the distance between the center of this lens and the point where it gets converged, that is referred to as the focal length. So, shorter this focal length, it increases that greater it is getting magnified or better is a, uh, it is a magnification or, and you know, the more it gets magnified, the more clear the image becomes. So, as the magnification increases, the quality of your image or the ability to view a particular image increases. Now we also have to discuss uh, three different uh, properties called reflection, diffraction and refraction. It's just a recollection of what you have come across previously. What is reflection? Now if any wave, now light is also a wave, when they uh, bounce on a particular barrier, if the waves direction changes that is referred to a, as a phenomena called reflection and what is refraction refraction of wave involves a change in the direction of a wave as it pass from one medium to the another now uh, you might know now if you're considering i'm con connecting it with microscopy over here when light is moving uh, through the air of course and it is focusing, you are oning a microscope from the light source, the light is coming and it moves through the air and then it passes through the glass and what happens? Then it goes to your specimen. So when it is, when this light is moving from one medium, that is from air to the glass, what happens? There would be a change in the speed as well as the wavelength of that light. That phenomenon is called refraction. Okay. And what is diffraction? Uh, diffraction is another property of light. It involves a change in the direction of the waves as they pass from opening, uh, as they pass through an opening or around a barrier in their path. Just have a look at this. These are different. Now, this is a reflection. That is, it is the direction is just changed because it is a barrier which is not allowing it to pass through it. And this is refraction when it moves from one medium to the other. The bending of the light can happen and this is diffraction. Now why do we have to talk about all this over here? As I told you earlier our main aim in microscopy is to get a well magnified image. So the type of lens which we use in microscopy of course we always need the light to be converged so we use convex lenses in microscopy and uh, the better or the shorter the distance at which the light get focused onto the particular object and the based on the focal length the better is the magnification and better is the ability of a particular microscope and at the same time when you are using uh, uh, a light microscope it is of course a light and the speed of this light is actually due to the bending property 
okay and so uh, the resolution or the uh, magnification of the image or the better quality of the image would also depend upon the what the bending of the thing consider this one if it is not properly bent it okay and if it is not coming out of the thing the magnification will not be happened and coming to this example i told you this bending of a light when it moves from one medium to the other or the refraction okay it also plays an important role in the magnification and the bending of light is also depending upon the speed of the light and uh, so and the index of this refraction or this you just just have a look at this this is the bending this bending or the index of this refraction is depending upon the velocity of the light in vacuum compared to the velocity of the light in that particular medium now now you might find it confusing or unnecessary right now but when you come to the practical applications of microscopy you will understand that this index of refraction plays an important role to provide the magnification a better magnification of your particular image because of this difference in the speed of light between two materials and given light peculiarities when a ray a ray of light is traveling in vacuum or air it encounters a new material the angle will change so the light will spend less time within the material and this level of bending is defined as an index of refraction so refractive index is the light bending ability of a particular medium now and to obtain a clearly fine detail image under a compound light mi microscope the specimens should contrast sharply with the medium and to obtain such contrast we must change the refractive index of the specimen from its medium by staining it so always to get a better clear image and to avoid the unnecessary bending uh, like to avoid uh, of course you should avoid uh, reflection reflection will not happen all unnecessary bending should be avoided but the bending should be done in such a way that you get a better focused image and to make that proper what happens you you should uh, make sure that uh, the refractive index of the specimen is in the is been changed in such a way that it will be different from that of the surroundings now what do you mean by refractive index now you just imagine this particular situation i told you refractive index it's mainly dependent upon what the velocity of light in that particular vacuum and velocity of the light in that particular medium that is refractive index now just have a look at this if you are given if an athlete is allowed to travel through a medium okay uh, he can either just swim across the stream directly to get the bond this is a possible path but sometimes if he is a light if you if i consider a refraction what happens he might travel from here and he will come here and then he moves like this and then he comes like this so his if normal if a uh, if a person has been passing from two different medias now he is on from land and he is moving to water so normally when he moves from land and to his water what happens the speed of this athlete will be found to be reduced and but if he is traveling through the same medium like this or if this medium is not affecting him the speed of the athlete will be found to be higher so same in the case of the light okay when light is passing from a one type of medium and to another medium okay this bending is referred to as a refractive index if this refractive index bending was is been prevented or is been overcome the speed of the light will be found to be increased and as this as that increases what happens you get a, a better magnification now let me just correlate this incident uh, with your microscope if you have a light which has been passing from the source of the light and it is passing through your specimen so when you consider the microscope down you have a light source then it passes through uh, a lens and it gets focused onto the object and you can see that uh, 
during this path it is moving from the air into glass and the speed of this light in the air is different and the speed of the light in the glass is different so there is a chance of bending and the speed of uh, what happens the magnification will be changed so to avoid this we do have we do have some strategies and we will be discussing so that the refractive index is being maintained. If the refractive index is being maintained uh, in both the media, that is, when it passes, uh, what happens? You get a better image. If you go to consider air or vacuum, the index of refraction is 1. And if you consider water, it is 1.33. And uh, that of alcohol is 1.36. And if you go to consider oil, it is 1.47 and 1.52 and all that. And if you go to consider glass, it is 1.75. So sometimes, so to, uh, if you want to consider the light which has been passing from the air and uh, which has been passing through all these different medias, you, can, you need to maintain, make sure that uh, the refractive index would be the same when the light enters into the glass and uh, passes through it. So we just keep this in your mind. Coming to the application of it, I will tell you.